next, I want to talk about how to spot guests. Um, real quick, one way um, is uh, to spot guests is to understand how regulars uh, behave. And anybody that doesn't behave that way is a guest. So I want to talk about how regulars behave and then how guests might behave. Uh, regulars are not going to have any hesitation. They're not going to be looking around. Um, uh, they might connect with people probably out there uh, that you've that you've seen um, out in the, the coffee area. Uh, once uh, once you're certain that a person is a regular, you can kind of take your eyes off of them and be scanning a little bit for those that might be doing some of these things that we'll talk about right now in how guests behave. Um, if you see somebody you don't really recognize, uh, then then kind of watch them. Watch for the flags. They wave really big flags. They'll have uh, deer in the headlights, you know, kind of look. Uh, they tend to look around, do a lot of looking around, and uh, just scoping things out and doing all that. Okay, kids, if they have kids with them, the kids are going to be clingy. Uh, they'll hesitate and get their bearings. They'll look around the corner, and then they'll look in. You know, just a lot of looking around. Uh, more likely to stand against a wall, um, to avoid people maybe a little bit. Uh, they might ask a question for, where are the bathrooms? What's that tell you? Can you take coffee into the auditorium? What's that tell you? Any of those kind of questions is a good flag that this person is pretty new to the crossing. Um, they might be carrying a, a VIP folder, which is something we give out in guest services that maybe they stopped on the way in because that's close to the front door. And maybe they have this folder that says VIP, looks really cool. Um, so look for those. Uh, they might be dressed up and uh, we're pretty casual around the crossing. And once you think you've identified and spotted a guest, uh, it's good just to watch them a little bit because they're going to throw up another flag and another flag and another flag. And when they come up, it's like, hey, I don't think I know you. My name is X. Hey, it's great to meet you. And uh, we'll go ahead right now and we'll talk about conversation starters. Okay. Uh, and I kind of started that with, hi, I don't think we've met. I am how long have you been coming to the crossing? Never ask somebody, are you new to the crossing? Because they may have been coming for six months and it's just an awkward thing. But you can ask them, so how long have you been coming to the crossing? Very safe, very safe question. And uh, if they're a first time, they're going to tell you, well, this is my first time here. And that's when you go, awesome, it's so good that you're here. Is there anything I can do to help you? Okay. So that's when you just start pouring into them and, and being over the top and helpful with them. Um, if they have kids with them, uh, brag about the kids' programming. Let them know that we've got great stuff. Uh, another good question is, how do you find out about us? If they mention a name of somebody that invited them, maybe that's some bridge that you can build. It's like, I know those guys. They're my best friends. They, in fact, they're in my small group. Speaking of small groups, how would you like to come join our small group? We would love to have you. Okay, over the top. Just, mm. All right, you got it. Uh, have you met the campus pastor? Uh, and, you know, if you see the campus pastor around and you go, hey, he's right over there. Have you met our campus pastor? Well, he's right over here. Let me introduce you and take care of him that way. Uh, if they've been coming a while, you can begin to ask, so are you in a small group yet? Give your testimony about small group. Uh, tell them where they can get signed up, which is a connecting point. Uh, so are you in a ministry yet? Give your testimony and uh, tell them uh, where they can go to get signed up or, uh, you know, who they can connect with to, to get signed up to do that. Uh, next, I just want to close by going through some do's and don'ts, some nuts and bolts, a little bit of this ministry. Be on time to start coffee so that it's ready 30 minutes before a service. Uh, coffee usually takes an hour to perk in one of those big things, maybe 45 minutes, but know that and be there in time so that coffee is ready uh, 30 minutes before service starts. Have everything set up and set out, all the condiments and stuff for coffee, uh, so that you can love on people and not be setting things out while people are coming. Uh, greet everyone with a big, fat, Jesus-loving smile, <laughs> okay? Uh, do your part to make sure people have incredible experience at the crossing, which may be going above and beyond your scope of responsibilities, of you know, leading them to the kids' area, taking care of whatever needs that they might have. 
keep the coffee area clean, keep the tables and the table area clean. Uh, serve people the coffee uh, at the crossing. We, you know, we're here to serve, and it's a ministry, and that's what we do. And so, uh, you know, if somebody comes up, it's like, how can I help you? And a lot of times they just come up and say, hey, I need a decaf. Great. Do you want that with spit or without? Have fun with people, okay? I don't know what I'm saying. Assist people. Be ready physically. Uh, in your appearance, look nice. Uh, be ready mentally, right frame of mind, mood, know your stuff about the crossing. You know, maybe uh, you've had a rough morning getting people ready for church and maybe something went sideways. And sometimes that can carry throughout the day. And especially if you get it to church and that's your first stop and you haven't really gotten past that or gotten over that. So I want to make sure that we're ready mentally and uh, that we're in the right frame of mind. Be ready spiritually. God, guys, understand this, feel the weight of it. God wants to use you today to touch somebody's life. So you need to pray about that and pray that God would give you the eyes and the opportunities to, uh, to minister to people. Uh, know where to send people for various things, the kids area, bathrooms, and all that. We've talked about that a little bit. Here's some don'ts. Don't huddle up and just talk to your workers uh, or to your friends. Uh, I think that's the next... Next one, don't get in long conversations with your friends, thus ignoring others and missing opportunities to minister. Okay, so here's two things that you can do. If somebody comes up to you and it's a friend and they want to talk, it's like, hey, listen, I'm busy today. How about if, if we connect right after church? And uh, they'll go, yeah, that's fine. And typically, that, that friend comes up to you maybe week after week. You do that with them one time, they're probably going to get the idea and not do that, although some people are slow to catch on, so you might have to do it the next week as well. And maybe it's like, hey, guy, don't come and try to talk to me when I'm doing doing my thing. Because when, when that happens, I, uh, l let me talk about the other thing that, that you can do. If they won't go away and, and you just can't get that to happen, what you need to do is is be 90% on your coffee ministry and 10% listen to this person. Continue just listening, but you do 100% 90 is all you're going to be able to do because you're being distracted a little bit. But give as much as you can to your ministry, and you be looking, and you be doing everything that we've talked about in this. And make sure that your conversation, you're not standing facing each other, that you just stand out here and you keep doing what you're doing. He's or she's still going to be facing you probably, but you're going to be out here doing what you are what you need to do, and that's possible to do. But I want to say you can't be 100%, but you can be 90 95%, 99%, just kind of listening in one ear and whatever. Here's what happens a lot of times, though, is we start out that way, and it's not too long, not too long, and we get into this, not physically maybe, but mentally. Uh, we're, we're just there, and we've forgotten about our ministry. So first thing, try to send them on. Um, and just do that. It'll, it'll happen. It'll take care of it, and it's done. Uh, but if, if for some reason the other happens, just mm, remember the importance of what you're doing and uh, make sure you continue doing that. Uh, this is good. Don't think about touching your cell phone, period. Just don't do it. And the last one is don't spit on people. <laughs> there you go. Had to throw that in. I don't know why. Hey, guys, I hope you heard my heart. I hope you understand the importance of your ministry and what can happen and what God wants to do. Um, just never forget that. Everybody that gets into that baptistry is a result of, I mean, you're a part of that. You're part of this team. And we got to have everybody doing their part, just like it says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the end of this training. Uh, just enjoy your ministry, love on people, have a good time, and uh, see what God does. It's going to be awesome.